there's a lot of pre-planning that takes place before we can even step on the job site. There are essentially three key pre-planning components to any erection job, being the erection schedule or sequencing plan. Some even call this the erection direction. We have briefed over what sequencing is and how to read drawings and even in the fabrication process. The arrival of material is not random, but follows a sequential plan that was placed together before we even showed up on the job site. Hey, just wanted to stop you and tell you, thank you for watching. It really does support us when you watch. Take the extra step, like and subscribe this video and or follow us. It would really help us out. Carry on, enjoy the rest of the video. Check us out at workerefficiency.com for more videos just like this. See ya. Second is the lift plan. We have more than 300 assemblies for our office building that will be rigged and lifted for installation by a crane. A lift plan is key, not only for our safety, but for the ultimate efficiency of the work needed to be done. Third is the site safety plan. Now, it's not that this step isn't important, but that this step is more or less the job of the GCs to outline the specific safety requirements for the job site. Each and every company can most definitely and do have their own safety requirements per job. That's also not to say that a safety topic can contradict those OSHA standard codes either. Typically, the site safety plan will align with OSHA standards and more. Simply calling out best safety practices, again, or unique standards based on the job site. In general, there are a lot of hazards when it comes to erection. As previously mentioned, rigged and flying steel overhead, scaling beams, four stories off the ground, the site safety plan sets the ground rules for what is to be expected of iron workers on the job site, how they should conduct themselves, and the general site safety precautions for the job at hand. Let's dive into each of these topics in greater detail. The erection schedule, aka sequencing plan, this plan is created and discussed in collaboration with the general contractor and other trade categories. Remember, all the work that we do as steel subcontractors on any job ultimately needs to align with the general contractor as we are not the only trade category working on this structure. You have electric, HVAC, landscaping, and more, just to name a few, who also need to coordinate their work around other trades. This organized plan must be put together, shared, and approved by the general contractor as there is a calendar and schedule that needs to be met for that project as a whole. Our sequencing plan, which ultimately fits into the approved schedule of the GC, is collaboratively and effectively communicated with everyone who's going to be on the job site. Everyone from shot guys to hook on guys or riggers, detail crew, crane operator, labor, operators, journeymen, and even other trade subcontractors need to be brought up to speed on what our erection direction looks like and vice versa. On the flip side, there is also a lot of work that needs to be done by the concrete contractor, for example, before we as the steel sub can go on site. So other trade categories need to likewise be just as communicative with their schedules. It's good to have a plan, but if the plan is not clearly communicated with everyone, what a waste of time and money that is. The crew, or we as ironworkers, should know what's going to happen from initiation to completion of a project as we should always have the most recent release for erection drawings. This includes structural, architectural, assembly, parts, and steel erection drawings. We should also have the most current lift plans and site safety plans. The team on site should always know the play of the day. Even on the daily before work begins, the team should level the playing field. This is where we are at, and this is where we are going for today. What steel has arrived, what is delayed, our sequencing plan gives us the overarching goal for completing our structure and how to get that work done. But as you would expect, there are unexpected events, so even having daily sequencing plans are beneficial to pivot for potential change orders. It is the foreman's job to know what material has arrived and or is arriving at their job and coordinate with their team. What is coming down the pipeline now? Our schedule and drawings are the roadmap and the instruction sheets for constructing our building. An organized team is an efficient team, so being communicative and collaborative will ensure winning teams that get work done on time and most importantly on budget. Let's look at the sequencing plan for our office building. To help us navigate the sequencing plan for the office building, we were provided an Excel sheet and erection sheets that have been color coded. Let's look at our column here labeled schedule in the erection schedule. On day one of being on site the job, we're going to set four columns, 48 beams and 10 bundles a deck. Very wishful thinking, but goals are what we're here for. That's great, but we have four stories. So what portion of the building will we be doing this in? If we look to our E-Sheets column, 
we will see references to what erection drawings we will be working in, and more specifically, what grid line sections of the building, grids F to H and 1 to 4. Other columns in our Excel sheet outline the specific piece marks for the steel going to be lifted and installed, and what steel is for level 2 and or for level 3. With our Excel sheet, we can now go over to our erection drawing, sheet E26, according to the Excel sheet. This is a partial framing plan, level 2 for the east side of the building meaning this drawing just shows the building cut in half and we are looking only at the east end. The highlighted red section is what we would be installing for day one. We would install four columns, girder beams, and then our intermediate beams. We call this boxing and filling. We will discuss this more in details later, but we need to secure our steel as it goes up, and we do this by forming boxes and then filling those boxes as we move. Now, if we move to sheet E28, which is the partial framing plan level three, we will work within grids F to H and four to two boxing and filling as we go. The perimeter of our office building is concrete wall panels that were cast on the ground and then tilted up. This is called a concrete tilt up building. And this is done by a concrete contractor. Embeds are supplied by us, the steel subcontractor. However, we will get to this more in the next part. So we will set our columns and then continue to set steel moving out to our panels. Using our various erection drawings, specifically the column layout plan, we can identify the piece marks for the four columns that we'll set. And then using the framing plans for level two and level three, we can accomplish the work ordered for day one. Okay, but what about the decking that was mentioned? Decking is an important part of erection and believe it or not, decking bundles do need to be placed specifically to make the job of shaking out or laying out deck easier. We would refer to our deck layout plans for that. This is the deck layout plan for our office building. Since we know we are working within grid lines F to H and 4 to 1 for day 1, we can see where our decking bundles will be laid out here. Bundle 1F will be laid on top of our steel between F4 and F3, sequentially there being 10 bundles of deck being spaced out over level 2 and level 3 of our sequencing plan for that day. That is day 1, and the process for assimilating what needs to be done for each day would follow suit. Day two, we are setting 42 beams and eight bundles of deck, and we will work boxing and filling level three, level four, and part of the roof for grid line sections F to H and one to four, based on our erection schedule. You can continue to go through this erection schedule and see what specific steel will be set where within what grid lines, what piece marks or assemblies will be installed, where and what deck bundles will be set, and so forth. This is why an erection schedule is so important. By day 12, we will have our entire four-story structure boxed and filled. The lift plan. As previously mentioned, we have over 300 assemblies, columns, and beams alike that need to be rigged, lifted, and connected for our four-story building. As you can see from our erection schedule, we will be lifting every day for 12 straight days. A lift plan not only ensures efficiency with the equipment we have at our disposal, but the lift plan ensures our safety. Now, every lift plan may have their subtle differences depending on your state laws and even when it comes to company to company, but generally outline the same details. The lift plan takes into account placement of the crane based on the work site for maximum efficiency in lifting, the weight of our load or loads, and details the safety parameters for max boom length and radius for our crane's capabilities depending on our loads. Let's first look at the site plan for our crane. We will have our crane, depending on what side of the building we are working in, either be staged for lifting at the center of grid lines E2 and E1 when at the east side of the building, and then we will move the crane in between D2 and 1 when working on the west side of the building. The center of our crane is detailed to be 20 feet from the panel wall to ensure we have sufficient reach for setting steel from corner to corner of our building. The site plan also shows the radius required by our crane to reach the corners of the building, radius being 90 feet. On the right side, we have our general notes for this crane site plan our max load will be around 6,000 pounds. Our rigging equipment will weigh around 200 pounds. That's how much our rigging will weigh and not the working load capacities of our rig itself. That's an important detail there. The hook block weighs around 1,406 pounds. The nose, 100 pounds. So the total weight of our load is 7,906 pounds. If we continue through our lift plan, we'll see our crane's working load capacity chart. Remember that 90 feet radius needed to reach corner to corner? With a 90 foot radius, we can have a boom length from 100 feet to 140 feet. Our max load needed to be within 11,600 pounds and 10,500 pounds. With our load being estimated to 7,906 pounds and having a max load for 10,500 pounds at 140 feet boom length with a 90 foot radius, we are at 75% of the crane's working load capacity based on our chart, which is reflected in our general notes. An elevations page within our lifting plan will detail our crane's boom lengths. Our building height will be 59 feet, so our crane's general working height will be roughly 112 feet 7 inches. 
Again, this may vary depending on the situation. Typically, as long as you don't exceed 75% of the crane's working load capacity for boom length and radius, we should be just fine. The lift plan also goes into general dimensions and specs of our crane itself. That is our lift plan. Thank you again for watching. We appreciate it. Like and subscribe, follow and share this video. It really does help us out. If you want to learn more, check out www.workerefficiency.com to find out more about our training courses and the app, and it will blow your mind. Learn more.